Right, um, yes. So I'm, I'm in, in um, the Commission. I'm speaking um, from the side of the Commission here. Um, I'm in the unit that deals with asset management. And um, the trigger, I think, for, for me coming here and speaking to you is um, that we, we made a proposal specifically in the, in the area of um, long-term investment and, and the role of funds in relation to long-term investment. So I'm going, to, I'm going to speak a little bit about this proposal, give you some ideas about what this proposal is saying, um, some, of the, some of the policy issues which um, were important when we were thinking about this proposal, and, and um, lay, lay, lay some of the groundwork to a debate, a policy debate, which will occur in Brussels around this proposal over the, over the coming, um, coming period. So I won't talk at great length about the, the, the background to this proposal. The, the core immediate background to this proposal is the work that the Commission's been doing on um, through and connected to the Green Paper on... Um, long-term investment, the, the discussions undergoing, um, undergoing um, in, that, in that process. And this is one element which, which, is, which has come out of that. Um, the, the proposal I'm going to talk about is, I would say, I mean, the, the first thing I would say in a way is this is not a silver bullet. This isn't the answer to all the questions being raised today. It's, it's a piece of a jigsaw. But our experience in the, in the asset management area in the Commission is that if we can build a trustworthy brand across Europe for a, a financial product, for a model for a financial product, then this can, this, this can eventually be a very strong driver of the market. This was our experience with the USITS framework for, um, for funds. This started relatively small. It's now a very large market. And we, we believe that a key element of... of, of how that works, why that works, is trustworthiness, consistency, understandability of, of the framework. So this is, the, this is a, a, a reason why this is not a silver bullet, but we, we think there's a, there's a good case for the Commission intervening, making a proposal, and then there being a, a, um, a political process to take this forward. It, 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 as a proposal, it's very similar to a... Um, a couple of proposals which we made in 2011, which are now actually in place, one for a European venture capital framework, UVECA, and one for a similar kind of um, um, venture capital, let us say, for social enterprises, USEF. These are two models, essentially, for closed-ended, I mean, I'll use a bit of jargon now and go into a bit of the detail, closed-ended um, venture capital funds, small number of investors, um, professional investors, um, where the focus, I would say, for these investors is, is also a long-term focus. The, the investors typically have a strong relationship with the enterprises they're investing in. They, the the um, fund managers, I should say, have a strong relationship with the um, enterprises they're investing in and view themselves as having a stewardship role. And we were inspired by this broad approach when looking at the, 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 the broader area of long-term investment. Our proposal is essentially, you can understand it as a sort of mirror to the USITS model, the USITS fund model, but for long-term investments where we essentially are defining these long-term investments as illiquid investments. It's not as simple as that, but in general, if you have a very liquid investment, a very li liquid assets, we already have a very successful model for investing in these, these assets, that is USITS. Where we, where we have a fragmentation in the market, where we have different models developing in different member states and a variety of different approaches is in illiquid assets. So our, our focus was rather to be inspired by the work we did on VC, which is also looking at liquid assets, to be inspired by the work that we did, we've done on USITs and the success of USITs, and to try and develop some sort of um, best of both worlds in a way. Now, the fundamental question you immediately face when looking at developing a framework like this is, who's it for in terms of investors? Is it for 
professional investors, institutional investors, retail investors, who, who are you targeting it at? When you answer the question of who, who, who it's for, how the framework works, what kind of rules you need, what sort of operating conditions you need becomes very clear. And here we had a dilemma. <coughs> we felt that it was, it was important to have, as in USITS, a, a, a framework which could be for everyone, so retail, but we felt that there was a problem with mass retail investment into illiquid assets. Essentially, illiquid assets mean you have to lock your money away, ultimately. You, can, you could design a framework to try and mitigate that, but then it becomes very complicated and there are circumstances in which that will not work. So there's a real challenge there. We, we decided to, to tackle that in our proposal, to tackle that challenge straight on. So we have a, a retail framework. You can market these funds to anyone. These funds are 70% um, invested in illiquid assets. These assets are ultimately infrastructure and, and similar projects. And the fund is closed-ended. What does that mean? That means that you are in it for the long term when you invest. What's the consequence of that? The consequence of that is it's probably not a mass retail vehicle, straightforwardly. You could have secondary trading or, or um, other, other ways of creating um, mass retail um, exposure, but, but ultimately, if you're going to go into these funds, you're going in, into it for the long term. We think, we think you have to be upfront about that. This is, these are long-term funds, and they are for the long term. And this is, this is a fundamental um, design question, I guess, in terms of how, how this framework will work. So we, we, we've, we've made a proposal which is, which is just to, just to um, underline these points. It it's, allows marketing to retail, so everyone can participate. Everyone can put their money into this. But it's very upfront that you are in it for the long term. And the long term is 10 years, maybe. We don't nail that down in terms of a specific period, but it could be 10 years plus. There's no right for you to be redeemed. And this creates the strongest and most direct support for illiquid assets because it's, it's not, we don't have to have a buffer, we don't have to have some sort of mechanism to try and allow for liquidity. We create a direct... Um, a, a direct exposure to these assets, a direct support for these assets, ultimately. It's a fund which can actually take a long-term perspective. So th this is, this is the, the, I, I would say, in terms of looking forward, this will be the, a fundamental part of the debate on this. Is that right? Should it be a closed-ended fund which does not offer liquidity, does not offer redemption opportunities, ties you in for the long-term? Should it be capable of being marketed across Europe to retail? These, these, these are the two fundamental questions, I think. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a slight flavor of why that's where we ended up. I, I personally was um, rather skeptical of this approach. I felt that, um, from my own perspective, if you really want to target the retail world, then you have to offer redemptions. This is, this is something which I felt um, was bread and butter for the retail market. However, we tried and we tried and we tried to come up with and, and spoke to many different stakeholders about how do you calibrate that? How do you, how do you create a product which allows people to invest for the short term yet is ultimately a long-term product? And one of, the, one of the key drivers of this market we saw ultimately, in terms of its initial development, would be um, not the mass retail end of the market, to be frank, to begin with, but actually um, smaller pension funds, smaller insurers. These are guys who potentially, you could say, are a, a kind of retail market in some cases. I mean, this is, this is arguable. And, and one story we heard from these guys is it was incredibly important for them to have a framework which had the highest levels of regulation. This is what they want to see. They want to see a framework which could be sold to retail. They want that label, that it's a retail-suitable label. Then they would have more confidence in it. Then it might become part of their, 
their possible portfolios. So we, we felt that the, taking this step of making it retail is very important for ensuring that there is actual uptake. I think I'm reaching the end of my time, so I'll, I'll draw it there to a close. I, I mean, we'll have a discussion later, I think, around, around details or the philosophy here. So I think, I, I think I've communicated the key challenge for me, which is this question of retail, not retail, closed-ended, open-ended. And I think this is, these are the fundamentals.